Welcome to the Nonprofit Exchange Podcast. Stories by leaders for leaders to help you raise the bar on your own excellence to release the potential inside of you. Now, here's today's podcast. Hey, it's Hugh Ballou and Russell Dennis. Welcome to the Nonprofit Exchange. Russell, um, our guest today is somebody that you connected us with. How are you doing today, Russ? I'm fine, and it's beautiful out here in Denver, Colorado, where my guest is, and she's just a remarkable woman who uh, is uh, just a master around leadership, but she has a very interesting journey that uh, that everybody should know about, and uh, her book really describes her in general. She's got a book called Unstoppable, and that describes Rocio Perez, who's going to tell us a little bit about who she is. Welcome. It's always good to see you. Russell, always a wonderful pleasure. Hugh, thank you for the invitation to be on your show today. I'm very, very excited, and I'll tell you a little bit about who I am, and then we'll go back to what made me who I am. And I am an international leadership expert, and work with individuals from Denver all the way to Singapore and Korea. One of the things that I love doing is helping people create an extraordinary vision in their life. I love helping them get them stuck. All of us get stuck in one way or another in our careers. And my goal is always to allow people to see how amazing they are so that they can have an extraordinary life. That's been one of the most exciting things that I've done. I've work, been working with people from the age of 17 years of age. It's been a long time. It's been an extraordinary journey over 24 years of watching people, seeing what they took. By the time I was 19, I was guiding 160 to 200 people at a time and taking them from where they were at in their goals and their dreams to be educated in their careers to where they're at today. And I've seen remarkable things all over the world and that's been very, very fulfilling to watch people open up new businesses, thriving businesses, lead their team members into extraordinary amounts of success. Yet it did not start there. And that's where my, my journey to unstoppable comes through. And I started off as growing up in extreme circumstances as a child. And by the time I was 12, given those circumstances, I was looking at different things in life and I left home. I ran away from home at the age of 12. I'm sure there's a lot of people that wonder, I, I hear that all the time, they're like, how did you do that? And I had a vision, I had a dream. Ever since I was a little girl, I was four years old, I wanted to inspire people and I would run around with my Uncle Sergio and say, Uncle Sergio, someday I'm going to grow up and I'm going to become a teacher so that I can inspire people. Whether I was born with that or I picked it up somewhere, I don't know. What I do know is that that drew me closer and closer to it. As I said, by the time I was 14, I was run away again, pregnant at 14, mama by 15. And at that age, I was also knocking on the university doors to let me in so that I can fulfill that dream. And with my sixth grade education showing up there, they're wondering, who are you? What are you doing here? And one of the things that I can tell you is that I was relentless at knowing that I wanted to go to school. And the only answer that I could hear that I would accept was, yes, this is when you start. <laughs> and so that led me on an extraordinary journey at the age of 17, starting college. And the track was difficult, guys. It was very, very difficult. It was an eight-hour track on a daily basis and getting up at three o'clock in the morning so I could start my track at 4 a.m. to be by class by 8 a.m. was definitely something that unstoppable leaders are made of. I look back at that part of my life and say, wow, you know, how amazing was that? Really didn't think about it. I'm like, this is what needs to be done. That's it. And I'm happy to say that along the way, from the age of 19 forward, I've led thousands and thousands of people. I became a serial entrepreneur. I did what was seemed to be impossible in the eyes of many individuals who were saying, that's not possible. How can a person with your background make it? And I've been in homes of very important global leaders. I've been in front of ambassadors of countries. I've presented to members of public. I've done all these extraordinary things. 
And it was all based on belief. It was based on what made me unstoppable and what made the people that I guided throughout the years unstoppable today. My son's 28 years old, which sometimes I can't even believe it. I have a beautiful four-year-old grandson named Emilio who continues to inspire me and helps me move forward as I continue to build businesses that support individuals, helping them get unstuck, getting greater levels of success, and helping them move forward in everything that they're doing, making an impact on this world. What a story. What a story. Um, show us that book again. You just right. happen to have it handy. <clears throat> I just now. have it handy. You know, I yeah. live this book. This book is all over the world. It made international bestseller in less than 12 hours. Whoa. From the moment that the book was launched. And one of the things that I can tell you, Hugh, it, it's been it's been an answer to what a lot of people were asking me, Rocio, what can I do to help myself as I was getting off stages and whether it was PhDs or MDs or one, two, threes or ABCs, whatever it was, whoever was getting off the stage wanted to get an answer. And besides coaching one-on-one -on -one or group coaching, here's another opportunity. This book has brought a lot of hope, a lot of transformation to people. And it's been very exciting to hear people who've had up to 33 businesses and say, because of this book and what I got out of it, I am doing business differently moving forward. And that's been very touching, very humbling, very inspirational. So tell us how you came up with that title, Unstoppable. Unstoppable is it's what I've always done. I, that's my middle name, Unstoppable by Nature, Unstoppable by Desire, Unstoppable. I was sitting here as I was writing a memoir, the next version of my memoir that will be scheduled to be released next year. And I said, what can I do besides answering the call? Uh, what's, what's that message that we all have inside of all of us? And in my experience, Hugh, it was the fact that working with so many people from all over the world, the one thing that sometimes they couldn't see, because I've been there and I've done that, I know but it's like not to see my own greatness in front of others. And sometimes they couldn't see it. They couldn't see their unstoppable nature. They couldn't see all the amazing things that they've done and how they can borrow from the past and how they, we were all meant to be unstoppable. Nine out of 10 people are unstoppable and don't know it. And for me, it's just to turn back that mirror and say, have you seen yourself? And the moment that they see themselves, we go through a very subtle process. And when they see themselves fully, they become unstoppable. They own their unstoppable nature. Well, that's, <clears throat> that is an impelling, compelling title. Um, so the, the rest of the title- Becoming a more intentional leader. I mean, I found it on Amazon, excuse me, a more intentional leader. So you wanna highlight those seven, seven steps? Most definitely. I'll talk about the first three steps that are really, really important. It's when we understand ourselves. Let's understand how our mind works. That's the first and most important thing. And knowing that our subconscious mind is the, just there to preserve and protect our life. And we, I don't have to think about how many times my heart's going to beat. There's an intelligence inside of all of us. And when we understand that, and when we also understand the fact that we're all meant for greatness we're all destined for greatness and we can go ahead and hijack our own success even in those moments that we don't think we're unstoppable so from the steps that are very important after knowing that is what is it that i must be aware of fostering that awareness and fostering that awareness and that capacity to change that we all have that we can all transform no matter where we start from knowing if this little girl here who would run around barefoot thinking of only a dream would be possible, then it's possible for all of us. If it's possible for one, it's possible for all. And I've proved it thousands and thousands and thousands of times over and over again. And then having that in, incisive discovery and accelerating my insights, how do I learn from the people that I already know so that I can continue to learn? Because who I am today, it's not who I must be in order for me to have what I want to have or be where I want to be. The next step, which is 
third step is I must know where I'm going, just like I knew where I was going. I wanted to become that teacher. I held that roadmap. And no matter who came along, whether Ann or Billy or Dave or whoever was there, I held my own map and said, this is where I'm going. Because if whoever didn't pay attention, it didn't matter. I just moved on to the next person and said, this is where I'm going. Sounds like you have a question right there, Hugh. No, I'm just resonating with, um, I was practicing my R. I was, oh, you're practicing your <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm Southern. We don't, we, we don't we say R. <clears throat> so this is, this is fascinating. Um, so, so go ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to have Russell jump in on the next question. Okay. But these are, these are really important steps. So, and what I was also thinking, um, and Russell elaborate on it, there's a lot of resonance with what we teach at Center Vision. Beautiful. So in that too is speeding up my personal evolution and that they all go hand in hand. How do I accelerate? How do I speed? Up? How do I become more aware of what's going on? And today, even more importantly than any other time in history, three things to me are super important. One is my auto leadership. How am I going to be leading myself? I hold the map. I take it wherever I go because who is the most important person in our lives? We are, right? Individually, we know where we're going. We're the ones that are going to make that commitment and move forward. Two is being that intentional leader. How do I get there, right? And it's about going through it over and over again. It's necessarily that, that I have to be intentional about everything that I do. It is, I have a level 10 goal. I can't give it 9.999 because that doesn't bring me through the finish line. What's going to bring you to the finish line? And understanding that sometimes that intention is being in positive places. And we can go off to many different conversations. Let me leave you with a picture here that was painted very vividly in my mind was that you can get through the finish line of a marathon running with 100 people than with three people on your back, right? When you think about that intentionality, am I in a place that's supportive? And if I'm not, how do I create that for myself? Nothing happens to us. It only happens through us. Where do I go? How do I do this? And how does that happen for me? And then the third step is being that aware leader. What am I aware of? What's happening in my life? How am I creating my own reality? What is it that I'm creating over and over again? See, we can think about a thought. The only thing that distinguishes us from, from a horse or a puppy or whatever that may be is the fact that we have the ability to be able to think and think very vividly and think and create that. Whatever it is that we think about, we can create it and bring it to fruition. And that's important to know because if our thoughts are positive, fantastic. High five you, right? Yet if our thoughts are negative, what is, what is the impact of those negative thoughts on what will happen in our lives, right? So if we're thinking negative, we don't know about negative, and we're wondering why we're getting negative results. It's about thinking about, hey, we have anywhere from 55 to 70,000 thoughts, 55,000 to 70,000 thoughts a day. And whether those thoughts are negative or positive depends on what we're into us that moment, that day. So that next, that very, very next step for me, that's very important is creating that roadmap. I know where I'm going here. I know where I'm going. Those three things are important. Now I know where I'm going. I can get there because I can look at that map and know what does it look like every step of the way and being comfortable with adjusting that. I think sometimes we get caught up in the, it has to be this way, yet it may not. Maybe somebody comes in and, and short tracks your entire learning right there. It takes you from point A to point Z immediately. And yet if we were to be married to the way that things are supposed to be, it's not going to happen, right? It may be a long, long journey, or it may never even happen. And if it does, we may not even be happy in the process because we put so much effort into it. And so it's... It, it's really fascinating to see that because I've seen it over and over again. And for instance, when I work with clients, individuals come to me and they say, I want to make more money. Yet before they came to me, they had already jumped out of their business or jumped. They took a leap of faith and didn't have a parachute. And so that's very destructive to see. You must have something that, that you know, whether you're very centered, you're very grounded, you're very, whatever it is, 
whether it's the finances that support you through that process or if it's just the belief and the action that will take you to your success. And then so the next one is taking that massive action. I've been relentless about taking action in my life. You know, getting on a bus, waking up at three o'clock in the morning after I went to sleep at midnight. It's not something that normal people do, right? <laughs> and I like to say, as I hear it from my friends, I'm fab normal, right? Because I'm willing to do whatever it takes in that recent, that relentless and resourcefulness. And also something just came up right here, just even the word resentful, to understand the impact of our words in our world. When a person holds on to feelings, those feelings actually have an impact in our world. And what is that impact in our world? That can be very detrimental. If I'm holding on to resentment, it's like drinking poison and expecting somebody else to get hurt in the process, which is probably one of the worst things that anybody could ever do. To me, is blessing that person. I hope that that person has an extraordinary time. Yes, it may have cost me time, energy, money, resources, whatever it may be. I just bless that person. I hope that person's in a better place. I truly do. And I can move forward. And then the very last part of it is understanding that I must come back and evaluate my process. What does that look like? Does that look like I'm tweaking it? Am I testing? Am I tracking what my progress is along the way and making adjustments? I feel that a lot of individuals, I, and I've been caught up in certain parts of my life, and especially, you know, things are going really rough and things happen and we have a little bit of a setback. What does that look like to be very aware that that also has an impact in the way that we're thinking and living life? All critical stuff for any leader that wants to move forward. And, and uh, these are a lot of things we discuss with people at Center Vision and moving forward. And, uh, you know, we all have challenges. There are a lot of challenges and we've overcome some great ones. And uh, most people I've talked to have overcome some great challenges and don't always recognize the magnitude of what they come through. That's really important. And nonprofit leaders are people with a big vision. Uh, they want to change the world. And uh, some of them have a lot of these attributes. So the mindset is very critical, as you've talked about. W what are some of the ways that you've seen leaders that you work with, if there are, say, what we would call three greatest hits for the ways that leaders get in their own way, what would those be? Well, I would say the mindset is probably one of the biggest things in that, and, and that's one of the things that inspired me about our previous conversations and this one as well, is looking at what, how am I getting in the way, and sometimes because I hear things, sometimes we hear things that we intake from other people, when, and that's what I shared earlier, that we must be very intentional about who we're around. If people are not supporting my vision, then I must look for a group that supports my vision because no matter the way we think about it, we start intaking that. It's like somebody coming in to throw garbage and garbage. And let's suppose that they're throwing garbage on our bed. Would we like that? And they, they throw it little by little by little. And then sure enough in time, that bed's going to be absolutely filthy and we're not even going to know where to start. So number one, find a place that, supports you and your vision the other thing is believe that the fact that there's good people in this world that are willing to help you know here you are russell and Hugh. the fact that you're here to guide individuals you know the way you can lead the way and short track people's success into it you can go into it even faster you can go the fast track you can go the slow track what do you want and that's the thing that i ask from my clients too what would you like to do I can take you on any journey. What journey would you like to be on? Do you want to be on the jet? That's going to give you immediate success. Or do you want to be on the horse? That's up to you. I will take you whatever way. I'm here to be of service. And then to know to stay focused on the vision. What is the vision? The vision that you came into this nonprofit organization, the reason why you set it up, who you're going to help will help you to continue to get up every morning and to know that that's what you're moving towards. Focus on the feeling of what it is that you're looking to accomplish for whether that's a, an individual, whether that's a, a city, a country, whoever, the world, 
whatever that is that's important to you, focus on the feeling of what it would be like. That's one of the things that we, we don't focus on enough, Russell, that we're focused on like, oh boy, you know, things are going haywire, as opposed to that's gonna feel amazing. That's gonna get me up every single morning. And there are mornings that I get up and I'm like, okay, I'm here to serve. I am here to serve the people that are ready to be served. And in that, that inspires me to get up, that inspires me to get on a stage and show up every single time as whether there's one person in that audience that hears that message or whether there's a hundred people in that audience that hear that message. It's about showing up and having that belief that gives us the belief and the confidence. The more we do it, the more we do it, the more easy it becomes. You know, that's what possibility engineering is about. And that's why I'm a possibility engineer. There's always a way around something that we can find it with the right support. And, and so, you know, becoming uh, a, a, what Hugh calls a transformational leader is intentional, it's deliberate, it's no accident, yeah. So does everybody, do, every, do all people have a capacity to be good leaders or is it something you have to be born with? You know, for me, we're all leaders. We're all meant to be leaders. We're leaders of our own life. Let's be honest. You know, the moment that we wake up, we're the CEO of our own company. We're the CEO, we're the financial officer. We're, we're leading ourselves. And all of a sudden, somebody put this title up here that is only there for the few. When in reality, for me, it's there for all of us. We all are leaders in our own way, in our own lives. And then stepping into leadership it, to lead others is also when we take some of those fundamentals into life. Let's say that for leadership, let's say that I'm a mom, and which I am, and looking at that, how do I guide a team? How would I guide them? Do I come and treat them with empathy and compassion? Do I come and listen and say, hey, Russell, is everything okay? I see that the project is not completed on time. Is everything okay? Everything going on with you? And whether I can help you fix that problem or whatever's going on with you, it also gives you an opportunity to say, oh, I don't need to hide because we hide. You know, whether we realize it or not, because we've been taught not to bring our host selves into work, which also has a huge impact. Again, we can go on many different conversations. But that piece alone there where we're siloing ourselves, here's who I am at work, here's who I am in, in real life. No, here's who I am as whole and complete as a being. And yes, we're all capable of being those extraordinary leaders. Let's bring some fundamentals. How would we treat our children? Do we want to treat them with empathy, compassion, love, connection? Would, do we, are there any throwaway people? Not really. Are there any throwaway kids? No, no. In reality is, have I found something that connects and inspires them to continue to move forward in the direction of their dreams, in the direction of their vision? So that sounds like what some of the ways that a nonprofit leader can lead with a vision. Uh, and and what, are, what are three things that a leader can do, especially in the nonprofit sphere? I know you work with all types of entity, but from a nonprofit perspective, what are, what are what are maybe three, what are the three most important things a leader can do to help make her team or his team unstoppable in nonprofit circles? Encourage self-care. Mindfulness is so important. And all the years that I've been around nonprofits, worked for nonprofits for over 24 years simultaneously, I've seen the impact of the individual, the burnout. Their heart is in the right place. They want to make an impact in the world. And sometimes as leaders, we're not consciously aware that we're running, but there are people who are running themselves ragged. And that's because we've already run ourselves ragged that we're not even connected to that. We're, we're numb to the fact that they're doing that. So encourage self-care is important. And also have those check-in moments with people, check in with them, connect with them, get to know them, ask them questions about how things are going on in their life and really get to know them. That's really, really big in my world is to get to know people sitting down for coffee, 
and also getting to know what their vision is. Okay, so one thing is to get to know, how am I going to get to where I want to be? And I remember more than a decade ago reading a book about leadership. And I always thought about how would it be the day that I become a leader in my organization? What would that look like? I would listen to people, get to know if here, I want to get to know who you are. And this, this is for me now. I want to get to know who you are. What's important to you? What would success look like? What do you not have right now that if you were to have would really light your world up? What would really make it worthwhile? When I know that, I can help that person as they're helping me get to my vision. I can help them get to their vision because it, this is not a one-way street. Not just because somebody's getting paid does that mean that they are disregarded. The fact is, you know what? They're giving you the most precious thing that they have, which is time. Absolutely. You can get anything from anywhere. You can get anything from anywhere. The time that that person's giving you cannot be replaced by anybody. You know, if we have a certain bucket of hours, we don't know when our time is called, and that's why that makes it so special. So get to know people and form those relationships. Take time to form relationships, not just inside your organization, outside of your organization. A lot of people walk around saying, oh no, marketing is like only one person's responsibility when marketing is a way of communication for all of us. So Russell, we got to the halfway point here and um, we titled our interview, The Five Top Secrets. Um, of unstoppable leaders. Now you shared your seven steps to becoming an intentional leader, but I'm um, I'm curious. Are you curious? Let's see what those those five top secrets are. Wow. Okay. Beautiful. Well, number one is getting to know myself. Every intentional leader gets to know who they are. They get to know what limits them. They get to know what drives them. They get to know what excites them. They get to know what blocks them. That is so important. First and foremost, get to know yourself because as you get to know yourself, then you can get to know others and come from a place of empathy and compassion. And in some cases, ruthless compassion. And that's really, really important. So get to know yourself. That way you can get to know others. The other thing is hijack your mind, okay? So you can hijack your mind. The intentional leaders, successful leaders, hijack their learning, right? They, they take their learning into their own hands. They're constantly learning from people. It's not that's just number, one. That's number two. Number two, continue, continuous learning. So hijacking your mind and learning from anybody that you can learn. There's not just one way of doing things, right? And that's learning more about you. How does that work for you? The next step for me is showing up from intention with everything that I do. If we look at those three things of leadership that are very close to me, so we already talked about that auto leadership, the intentionality. How am I intentional? If I know that I'm working with Russell and I know that Russell wants to send these kids to college and specifically Princeton and Yale, how can I help him every day to show up with intention in everything that I do for him? right? It's not just me, it's him. And then to show up from a place of authenticity, show up with those values that are so important, authenticity, connection, vulnerability. What a concept when people know me as an individual. Let me, let me share one thing on that view. I used to speak from the stage and you can give me any topic that I was familiar with and I did an extraordinary job and people connect. Let me tell you, when I started to share about me and who I was, and what my journey and where I had been through, then people will follow. Mm -hmm. And that was so different because it took something from me to be so vulnerable. And I thought that that vulnerability was actually something that wasn't supposed to be shown. So when in reality, the moment that you show up from a place of authenticity, vulnerability, connection, story, people, there's a relatedness within others that you can connect with. And then showing up with energy, like extraordinary energy. Nobody talks about energy. 
you we see leaders from the stage talking and expressing yet their expressions don't match what they want us to see from the audience and that's so key so it's very different i can come in and tell my son son i really love you or i can lean in son i really love you same intonation my body speaks louder than words right and when we can show up from that point, you know what it is fantastic to get to know you it is fantastic to get to be here with you that's a different story right when we can look at somebody in the eye from eye to eye and ground that person because they've lived whatever's going on in that day that's what leaders really do they they focus on that individual and they pay attention to what that person's going through because they are the most important person in front of them in that moment just like you are and each person that I stand before is the most important person in that moment because we all are. Well, that's critical. You know, all that's, those are great attributes for people to have to become unstoppable. And uh, I had uh, actually thought of an acronym for hijack. I remember writing a, writing a piece quite some time ago. I'll have to go out and find that. <laughs> but uh, so those are characteristics of extraordinary leaders too, you know. So when you go into your typical workplace, and, and it doesn't seem to matter, I guess, which type, and uh, there's some uh, challenges that you have in nonprofit workplaces that you might not have in others, but what's missing in the workplace when it comes to leadership, you know? What are some of the things that are missing and, and how is that impacting the effectiveness of, uh, of both nonprofit and profit making entities? Uh, the, the most important thing that I think is missing is our humanity. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're not seeing each other as human beings, that we're more concerned about the work, that we are not thinking about our impact too that we work in silos and we work by not just in a silo we think that our work only impacts us when in reality our work impacts everybody in the organization when i start thinking from a place of how does this impact this other individual let's let's take the engineering world right now i'm quite familiar with many different worlds engineering in particular engineers i have the extraordinary ability to be able to make them dance like presidents of associations don't even know what happened the moment that i walk in a room why are these people they walk in they're like why are these people connected why are they dancing why are they engaged well allow me to share right it is that humanity connecting from from the heart connecting with individual and also understanding their world what's going on in the world when we talk about how sometimes we're hoarding Sometimes we hoard information. And in that hoarding of information, we're withholding. So we're withholding from, now we're withholding not just from our project, we're withholding from everybody. So how we do anything is how we do everything. And everything that we do has an impact on what we do and how we show up in the world. So those are the main things like people, passive aggressive. Um, emotions you know when we talk about passive aggressive when we know that 66 percent of individuals don't like their jobs people have been chasing money they went into careers because they thought they were gonna make money not because that's what they felt made them happy I went into this career I chased money I know what that looks like I know what that feels like and that's a very lonely world and I've also come in from a place of I wanted to inspire right and inspiring people the more I drifted away from that, the more miserable I was. And the more I walked into it, it was like, wow, I, I'm, I'm happy. How can this be? Do I get paid for this? And I love that fact, right? Because that's where the happiness comes from. When we know that 28% of individuals are passive aggressive, what does that look like? And what are the implications of that passive aggressive? And how, when we talk about that apple spoiling the bunch, that will spoil the bunch. When we know that 80%, 80, more than 89% of individuals who volunteer, and this is what's missing, we're not doing something that is outside of ourselves. 
contributing to others, when we know that that happens as a leader, then I can support my people in that. And there's so many other things. Those are the most important things. And one other thing that I feel is very, very important is the emotions in the workplace. They're real. They're going to make or break your business, whether we understand it or not. And that's people running around passive aggressive. I see this all the time, whether it's CEOs, I've spoken inside of prisons. I have worked with CEOs of companies and all the way in between. And the thing that I see the most common is it's our feelings that are get impacting us. Sometimes we feel anger, resentment, blame, shame. We don't feel good enough. We don't feel worthy enough to be where we're at. Whatever that may be, those emotions actually have an impact. If we're running around withholding in our world, it's not going to work. Well, there's a lot of a lot of stuff packed into that narrative you just gave us. There is. You're sort of expanding on something you said early on that um, how you had influence on others and that leaders are really influencers. And you just kind of mentioned that early and then you whiz by a really strong soundbite here about how we do anything is how we do everything. And that's, that's so true. You just kind of work that through your, your narrative there. A whole lot of good stuff there, Russell. And then what I'm liking is there's a whole lot of resonance um, there's a whole lot of resonance in, in what we teach. And the, some of the key key points of resonance is, is you're talking, we, we teach that leadership is founded in relationship. And you're, you know, you're, you're talking about the aspects of that. And communication is likewise. When people are, we call the passive aggressive, we call it triangling. And so people are taking an odd position in a triangle against another person with you. And so you've got this power position in a triangle. And what's lacking is relationship. And so you pull those people together and you expose that toxic, passive, aggressive stuff. And there's no way to deal with it without pulling a triangle together and exposing it to light. Because, you know, fungus dies in the light and we just got to get it out. Some of those are the really unhealthy systems. So Russell, she's given us a lot. We got time for a couple more questions and then we'll have a sponsor moment. But um, it's a whole lot of content packed into this. And people listening, um, it, you find this at thenonprofitexchange.org, and we have four years worth of these great interviews there, catalog, uh, in sequence by date. But each one of them has the transcription of what we're talking about, and we'll put in your website. I think it's already on our page, and we'll put it into the podcast as well. So we'll also put a link to where they can find your book on Amazon, and when you get the new one, you'll have to let us know. So I bet Russell's got another one of those really great questions up his sleeve. Well, one of the things that we haven't covered, you, uh, Rocio does work with a nonprofit called Global Minded, uh, and that's all about diversity and inclusion. And we're almost due for a panel on that. But inclusion of ideas, uh, and I've read studies. I know that the Denver Foundation did a lot of work just a few years ago to help uh, cultivate diversity and inclusion in nonprofits. And how important is that to leadership and what does that look like from your perspective? It's so important from a leadership perspective, diversity and diversity of thought, two completely different things. It's so important to include individuals because I can tell you, I've walked into rooms where people have had this problem for a very long time, for instance, I came in to deliver a presentation, group of, it was a team of basketball females, youth, and they couldn't get through. Some of them were doubting themselves. They didn't know what, to do, what was happening. What I can tell you is because of my experiences in the world, I was able to walk in there. They've been working on this for nine months, remember? I was able to walk in there and in 15 minutes, help them shift. In 15 minutes, they were number one in tears because they were so excited. They were so excited about the new possibilities and opportunities. And in 20 minutes, it's like, they're like, some people turned around and said, we're going to church tomorrow just because of what we see, right? To be able to, to take other individuals' experiences. When we invite those experiences to the table, regardless of the background, I love background. You know, I'd love to hire somebody from prison. You know, I'd love to hire somebody who's had these life experiences because they know 
certain things that we're missing, right? I'd love to see, and I once heard that, you know, I heard a lady who was hiring a number of individuals who were from prison. Why? And she sat down and asked them when she got past the idea that this person was from prison, says, okay, well, let's talk about marketing. How did you market? Well, I've never marketed. Well, how did you sell drugs or how did you do whatever? And this person started bringing, well, I studied my market. I did this, I did that, I did that. And when you can start taking those gifts, to me, they're gifts from every person. Imagine that and encourage you. Because let me tell you one of the things, I work on a global scale. And one of the most fascinating things and also very saddening things is that so many people sit around the table and they'll, they'll confess to me and say, you know what, Lucille, I just don't say anything because I don't feel my, my, my voice is accounts there. I don't feel like I have anything to say. And I'm thinking, wow, there's so much for you to say. You have so much to contribute. I want to hear you. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear what you're saying. And, or in some cases, people show up and they say, well, I, I don't know if I should ask for this, or maybe I sound too arrogant for wanting this. And I'm like, arrogant? Wow, you know, we should all have what we want out of life. A leader should help individuals tap into what's possible, not where this person wants to go necessarily. If we see that there's much greater potential, take them to that potential. That's been the reason why the people that I've worked with have had so much success. I've taken cohorts of people that had 100% graduation from our programs. 100%, unheard of. How did that happen? That happened because I saw their potential and I led them to their potential. One thing is to scare people. You don't want to get them into freak out zone. You want to get them into possibility and building those blocks over and over again. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Part of our methodology as we go in and we, we do live events, we bring people in, we put uh, we put low tech tools in their hands, give them markers, give them uh, sticky pads, what? things to write on. Because one of the things that happens in a group dynamic is that you get certain people that just kind of take over. The extroverts take over and uh, your people are your best asset and you're leaving brain power on the table when you've got two or three voices out of a group of 20 that are dominating the discussion. So it's leveraging that with people being your most important asset and taking time to develop them, give them ways to develop. And that's something a lot of nonprofits don't do. They don't feel like they had the resources. But you hit on the point earlier when you talked about taking time to sit and talk with people. That costs you nothing but a few minutes. And you take time, you have some coffee and get to know people. That's a real powerful thing to really get that buy-in and, and, and to make sure that every voice at the table is heard and to bring in other people, bring in new ideas. Uh, this, the, the idea of being very teachable, being flexible, uh, and there's so many things. And, and today's workplace, we've got people from 18 to 80 everywhere. And so it's, it's a different type of future that we're looking at as far as the workforce goes and, and the way that people approach things. So how do we prepare for a workplace of the future from a, the perspective of being a leader and, and so that we can grow and develop them? I, lo I love the question. I love the question. As a matter of fact, I presented on a national level about this specifically. And in preparation for a future for the gig economy, which we're in, I'm looking at how do we transform the world for me is to really encourage that connection, individual to individual, it, encourage individual stories, encourage the authenticity, the vulnerability, and understand the distinctions between being vulnerable and feeling vulnerable are two different things. Understand those distinctions. Being vulnerable is that I get to share myself with you, what's important, what's near and dear to my heart, versus I feel vulnerable, I feel attacked by somebody, right? That throws me into survival mode. We can go into other conversations right there. So number one, encourage them. Encourage people to connect with each other and truly listen. I heard you talking about listening to individuals. That's so important. Listen. Find a way. Learn about listening because what we've been doing, and I can almost guarantee you, 
that there's very few people in the world like you guys that actually hear what people are saying. Okay, so that's what makes extraordinary leaders. And we're looking at, at two to three percent of people in the world that are extraordinary leaders. So they have the ability to be able to listen and to be able to feed back to that individual, not only what they heard, also what's possible in that world of possibility. And then you're looking at many other things of here, encourage the self-leadership. I'm not here to do it for you. Even when I work with clients, I'm not here to give them the magic solution. I'm here to help them rediscover what's already in them. I'm not here to teach them anything, right? Which is very fascinating from what other individuals may be doing. It's perfect. It works out for them and their clients. For us, what works, what makes it sustainable is that individuals work with us for one year. That's the max. That's it. I have shared every tool and resource and help you reflect through a process of reflection. Helping people reflect helps people and really figure out how best to coach each individual, understanding their personalities, and we can go into many different conversations. Those are the key things that are important for me. Awesome. Awesome. And when you're talking about listening, um, when I teach leadership, I come from the perspective of a musical conductor. And listening is essential for us. And it's not a very fine-tuned skill for most leaders that I, that I meet. And listening happens with your ears and your eyes. Because there's lots of subtle things that people communicate in, in various different ways. And you just watch a conductor. There's lots of ways we communicate. We never say a word. So there's, uh, there's the listening that, that makes us aware of what's going on around us. So this has been a whole lot of really good stuff packed into a short interview. Our, our sponsor, again, is, is um, our friends at WordSprint. And I was visiting with them, Russ, and we are, uh, we're starting a campaign with the Lynchburg Symphony, like the campaign we have with uh, Center Vision. And um, Bill and his team are a mail house, but they've got decades of research on why donors stay donors and why they raise their donations and how they open up the door to introduce to other donors. It's called Top of Mind Marketing. And it's really that, that communication about what we've done with the money you gave us. We've been really good stewards and we've taken your money, put it with the other money. We've done amazing things. So we communicate with our people. And in our case, we send our magazine and we always send it to some new people. And, and Rocio put her, her address in to the registration. You'll be getting the magazine. As a matter of fact, you'll be getting a follow-up uh, email from our acquisitions editor asking you to contribute because we're talking about how to start up a nonprofit in the next issue. And um, it's really big having the right leadership skills. So Bill Gilmer and his team at wordsprint.com can help you stay in connection with your tribe, whether you're running a nonprofit or a church or a civic group or a business, it's really important to put something in people's hand. It's the rhythm, it's the message, it's the person. And it's 30, 30, 30, and it's gotta look good. That's only 10%. So you gotta reach people and stay in touch with them and continue to build that relationship. And you can find the magazine on our online community. Um, Rocio is a member of our community. We'll be talking to each other, we'll be helping each other, we'll be observing and thinking about things that others know that we don't know, fill in the gaps. And you can find it if you go to where you see this interview, the nonprofitexchange.org, the word the, T-H-E, nonprofitexchange.org. And it'll take you on the page where you see upcoming and the last episode. And then you can see a blue button at the top. And it says, join. And if you join, you get uh, Hugh's five pillars of success program it's a hundred dollars just you don't have to pay for that it comes free with joining so join us and we're better together as we say in the south none of us is as smart as all of us so Rocio, as you're wrapping up all of this great stuff what's a thought that you would like to leave with people or a challenge you'd like to leave especially with those people working in the hardest place in the world that's in their clergy or nonprofit leaders they're working in this space with volunteers what what would you like to leave them with today lead them with your vision first get to know yourself i mean i'll, I'll repeat that one get to know yourself so that way you get to know others and through that 
lead them with your vision. Really authentically connect and get to know their vision and how your visions connect together. And just really being very, very intentional about what you're doing. Invest in yourself, invest in your mind, invest in your people. Your people are your greatest assets into that. And I love the fact that we get to help individuals from all over the world and you gentlemen get to help so many people through this. And it's just know that probably one of the most impactful things that I've heard has been that my impact is your impact. And when we can see that in another, when we can help them achieve that goal that we're working on together, we know that our impact is even greater. I can tell you that we did an assessment earlier this year, and just to know that I, by myself, in a company with the leverage of others, and you know, I could go so far, but yet to go even further to make that global impact it has taken a lot of individuals who are committed and who can see that vision. And because of that, we were able to reach then 1.5 million in months. That would have taken years to achieve. And yet that achievement was because it was all of us. So I make the invitation, you know, for those of you who want to come and, and join and connect with, you know, we've got Unstoppable, you know, www.7stepstounstoppablebook.com. We have a free webinar for individuals. I make that offer to your listeners that they can come on board and send me a quick email. Whoever signs up and purchases the book through that can get a free one hour webinar and go through that process, right? When we get more knowledge, we get more understanding, we, we shift into wisdom. And that's the most important thing is that we can talk about this just like you gentlemen do so beautifully. It comes from the heart. It's there for you. There's, it becomes a part of who you are. Leadership is who I am. Merci. I thank you so much for, for tithing your time with us and, and uh, connecting with our audience. Thank you folks out there who are watching and listening. Uh, for all that you do to make the world a better place. We are here every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on the Nonprofit Exchange, where we bring you brilliant people like Rocio and resources that can help you grow because it's all about being teachable, learning, growing, and expanding who you are all the time so that you can leave your footprint on the world because we want to leave the world a better place than we find it. You can also get the Nonprofit Exchange podcast at, the, at iTunes or Stitcher. Sign up so you don't miss an episode. We will be here again at this very same time next week. Until then, keep making that difference that you make. And thank you for being a service to others.